How's it going, everybody? So, um, whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. The stone which the builders had rejected. Uh, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priest and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. But they could understand that much of the parables, couldn't they? Hmm. LOL. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Ah, that's why that guy calls him the governor. Very interesting. Chris Doring, the governor. Part-time Pete and the governor. Yeah, the guy Peter Peter Burns calls him the governor. Why does Peter Burns call Chris Doring the governor? Peter Burns and Chris Doring talk about ba -ba -ba -ba. and now all of a sudden you can't see it. I entered the name of the guy that calls him that. Images, why does Peter Burns call Chris Doring the governor? It's because they're all mystery Babylonians and they always like to make fun of the death of Jesus. And um, so on and so forth. Anyway. Sorry for wasting your time on that. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teacheth the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny whose image is on the subscription they answered and said, Caesar's. And he said, render unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And they asked him, comma, end of today's study. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. I will tell you this is the first time the church is removed. Uh, the removal of the church is throughout the book of Revelation. A great multitude which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in the white robes? So there's a certain subset that are in the white robes. And whence they came. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now that is specifically spoken in Daniel. Concerning the great trib is for to cleanse the church. It's Daniel 11.35 and Daniel 12.10. And you can compare that 
to Acts 14.22. We all through much tribulation enter the kingdom. You have to go through tribulation. The great tribulation is for the church. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Now that is um, all the way in the New Jerusalem. And the New Jerusalem is not officially introduced in detail until Revelation 21, the bride. So anyway, I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.